How's it going, everyone? It's Sam. Bitcoin is possibly the cheapest it will ever be. And we probably won't see $40,000 Bitcoin again. We are lucky to be able to get it at 44000 I want to explain why that is. Now, to be clear, I've been buying throughout the entire bear market. I continue to add right now. And there's a reason for that. There are a lot of reasons for that. I want to explain why that is and how you have to think about Bitcoin going forward. I also want to cover some of the top news today and what's happening with BlackRock. I want to expose some of the people that have been meeting with SEC and BlackRock uh, and just talk through the market. If you don't mind, hit subscribe, turn that bell notification underneath the video so you can see future videos just like this one. There are a lot of cryptos moving up right now. We'll talk about that in a second. But if you don't mind, check out Margex underneath the video. I am up on all my trades now. We're moving up pretty big. We've been having people sign up. If you want to have a non-VPN needed, non-KYC exchange where you can trade a ton of different cryptocurrencies on leverage, Caspa was just added there, but we have ETH, Bitcoin, Pepe, Shiba, um, XRP, and you can use all different forms of collateral from USDT to Bitcoin to all different kinds of things. Now, I will say I made a 24% gain today on a trade that I just opened yesterday. And the day before, even when the market was down, we just timed a trade well and got another 24% gain. If you want to sign up, you can do it underneath the video. You also get deposit bonuses and you get discounts on fees. To check it out underneath the video, we're gonna run a trading competition here very soon. There's also a trading competition going right now on the Blowfin link underneath the video. There is a prize pool. There's also um, some, other, some other prizes as well like a Nintendo Switch, an iPhone 15, you can sign up right now and start trading and get in on that price pool, get hundreds of dollars of USDT. Uh, so let's take a look at the market. Just today, we had Solana flip XRP. So Solana moving up to almost $80. I mean, now it's up to a 33.7 billion dollar market cap, up 300% in the last in the last 90 days. I mean, think about that. It was like $20 three months ago. How crazy is that? Now, Bitcoin is also doing well. I mean, we're pushing up against 44,000. Ethereum near 2300, 2250, I guess. Uh, a lot of altcoins moving up pretty well today after having a little bit of weakness. Yesterday, I did a video talk about some of the top gaming cryptos I'm investing in right now and how people were scared just a day or two before because they had fallen down. Dips are meant for buying in the bull market. That's why I keep on saying we are in a bull market. Dips are meant for buying. We can fall down 10, 20, 30%, but just make sure you have enough money to go buy and then you'll be sitting pretty. There will be a time for taking profits, but in my opinion, it's not now. There are too many bullish things happening. Bitcoin also flipping Switzerland for the 13th largest currency on earth. I mean, we have what, 20% more and then we have South Korea, 20% more and we have Australia. 25% more or so, and we have Canada. So we're coming for you, Canada. We wanna to be top 10 for Bitcoin. $1.1 trillion would put us there. Pretty cool, uh, pretty cool. So this is the, this is just uh, a comparison of the stock of narrow money, stock of narrow money, which is M1 basically. Now, NASDAQ is also doing well. Market's not opened yet today. I'm recording this like right before the market opens. But you can see it's hitting new like yearly highs. We have to go back about two years to see the all time high in the NASDAQ and we're approaching it. We're what, 4% away, something like that. Uh, so just $1,000 more on the NASDAQ composite and we're in a new all time high territory. We also have news, BlackRock met again with the SEC. I know it sounds like I just re reported this yesterday and the day before uh, last week as well. But that's because they keep on doing more meetings. This was just yesterday they met with them. And take a look at some of these people. So I looked up some of these people's names that are from BlackRock. And we have Robert Michnik, who serves as the head of digital assets for BlackRock, which makes sense, but still a big name. We have Aditya Adewater, um, who is senior ETF attorney for BlackRock. We also have Ms. Gia who is a managing director at BlackRock and served as the global head co-head of ETF markets for the last two years, basically. 
those are just the top three people. But you can see, like, those are huge names at BlackRock. Like, some of the top employees, lawyers, ETF uh, people at BlackRock, they're meeting with people from the NASDAQ and meeting with people from the SEC. So, this looks like a dead bang lock. As much as you can have a dead bang lock without being a dead bang lock, like they've done 24 plus meetings now. The SEC has with some of these people from the different companies that want to have ETFs approved. So I don't know why people are still bearish, right? There can always be legs down. I've talked to several people that are in the crypto market that work in it every day that still think we're going to have a black swan. And that's possible, but that's what it feels like after a bear market. It feels like, oh, there there has to be something that's going to push us down. I need to hold on to like a lot of cash. That's what people think. But this is not a time to hold on to a lot of cash, in my opinion. It's a time to have some cash, right? But you don't want to be 50% cash right now. You want to have allocation. You want to have uh, money in the market. So we have a lot of people with that, with um, the ETFs or with the companies trying to meet with SEC some people might be worried why, like, they might be worried that some people in the government are still going to push back against us, like Elizabeth Warren. But this is a good take. Um, Liz, Liz Warren, Elizabeth Warren, will use a spot Bitcoin ETF approvals to her advantage. Post approvals, there will be an increased push by her cabal, the DOJ, and the SEC to hammer crypto. Basically, they're going to approve the ETF. And then they're going to go attack crypto, which, I mean, there will be some FUD, but it won't really matter because they'll just push people to Bitcoin. Oh, you can do it safely through these ETFs, these companies that we're working with closely, holding their hands through the process. So be ready. There's going to be some FUD after this happens. I am still majority in Bitcoin, and there are a couple of different reasons for that. As we know, the national debt continues to tick up. We're going to hit 34 trillion dollars here very soon and the crazy thing is this number here interest on debt i highlighted it so i made sure that i covered it it's nearing 700 trillion uh 700 billion annually um this continues to tick up as interest rates are pretty high right now we have to pay a lot of interest there is a good chance we're going to lower rates which floods money into risk markets that's what they've been saying for the last week or so. That's what Fed officials have been saying. So that's one reason that I am so interested in Bitcoin. Now, some people are going for altcoins. Kak Inu is up 700%. I realize some people are going to be like, why are you even covering this? I'm not invested in this, to be clear. I'm not, but people are talking about this everywhere. And we're starting to see little meme coins like this start to pop off. $200 million market cap. Like, People are becoming rich from meme coins once again, and they're going to go pile that into safer investments at some point or riskier investments, something, right? Uh, I don't know how you can get much riskier than meme coins, though, unless you do meme coins on leverage or something like that. But like they're going to go plow that into Bitcoin. You know who else is going to plow money into Bitcoin? Everyone. At this point, this is the first cycle ever, this this last cycle that we've had. I had to go back nine months to, or eight months to find this chart. People don't talk about this, but the Bitcoin balance on exchanges as a percent of circulating supply has gone down for the first time ever. You can see Epoch 1, barely anything went on exchanges because there weren't really exchanges around. Epoch 2, we actually had an increase. Epoch 3, we had an increase. And then right now, we've actually seen a decrease. This is the first cycle, this last cycle, where the price has gone up. The amount of people in the market have gone up, but we've had less Bitcoin sitting on exchanges. So it's showing that's actually becoming more scarce and the price is going up and we're getting more people in. Keep in mind, this is something that I haven't really seen people talk about. The time, the time that people are trying to get in the market is changing. Like we may never see prices like this again, 44,000, because the the timeline for investments is getting longer and longer. We have over 70% of holders of held Bitcoin not being moved in the last year. And part of that is because we're starting to get huge companies. We're starting to get, we're going to get retirees. We're going to get pension plans. Um, we're going to get all those people into Bitcoin and they're going to hold for a really long time. People that have even a longer time preference, like MicroStrategy, they're thinking 100 years in the future are coming into the market as well. We know kingdoms, countries are getting in. Do you think the kingdom of Bataan is 
mining Bitcoin so they can dump on the market? No, no, they're buying it or they're mining it to be able to hold, right? Maybe they dump a little bit here or there, right? Maybe, but when you get other countries buying, like even El Salvador, <coughs> people think that, oh, it's just, you know, a small country that's buying a small amount. It's really just trying to create some free media attention. Look at their time horizon. Look at countries' time horizon. Are they trying to flip? Like if they can get the whole government to approve, I'm saying countries in general, if they can get the government to approve buying Bitcoin, do you think they're going to day trade that? No. Do you think they're going to look for a year and try to sell it and then buy back in? No. They'll get too much flack for that. They're just buying and holding for the long term. They don't care. They have money coming in every year, even like the U.S., we can print money whenever we want, or the government can, right? We can print money and then go quietly buy Bitcoin or mine Bitcoin or something like that. And they're not trying to flip it. They're just trying to hold it, right? You have access to infinite money to buy something that is finite. A lot of countries can do something like this, and they will be doing this. They are looking 50 years, 100 years into the future. They don't care about flipping it from 40 to 80, they don't. So the fact is we have people that have infinite money or countries. We have very long time horizons. We have retirees that are going to be getting in pensions that are going to be buying in that don't care. They're just going to put it in a portfolio, not look at it for the next 20, 30, 50 years. People are going to want some allocation to crypto, especially when it's at all time highs. They're going to be saying, hey, I want to buy. So what happens then eventually when we get to 100, 150,000 people, some people are going to sell, right? But then other people are going to come in, they're going to see Bitcoin at 100,000, 150,000, it's going to fall 10%, right? And they're going to say, I can't afford to be out of this any longer. This is a time to buy. And we're already seeing it now. Like we're seeing a little, we saw a 10% dip. We were at 44,500, 45,000, something like that. We went down to 40,500. 40, we had buyers come in. We had a very strong amount of buying. It's going to be the same thing when we move up. Now, of course, we might have a bigger swing than that. Maybe we go from 150 to 120, 110. But there are going to be buyers that continue to buy. There are going to be so many people that just hold, right, too, like the big institutions. They're going to say, we have, think about BlackRock, right? We have access to $10 trillion. Now, it's not like the company itself owns $10 trillion. They have assets under management of $10 trillion. But we have this much under management. We make a shit... Oh, uh, pardon my French. We make a shit ton from, custo from the ETF or from custodians. They're going to make half a percent, a percent, whatever it is. It's going to be very little work for them. We need more people to buy it. So we're going to push it even harder with our financial advisors. We're going to push it harder with ads. We're printing $5 for every dollar in ad budget that we put towards Bitcoin ETFs. We're going to put some of our own company funds behind it too to show that we believe in this, right? So as soon as it falls, there are going to be people that say, we don't have a big enough allocation yet. We were not able to buy billions of dollars, tens of billions of, tens of, billions of dollars at a time because it would force up the market too quickly. This is our opportunity. This is our time. And what happens then? It's not like there's going to be any more Bitcoin that's printed or mined, right? I say printed because of the US dollar, but there's not going to be any more. It's only going to come from sellers. It's not even going to come from miners at that point. The miners are going to be printing money, but they're not going to be able to sell off that much Bitcoin. They're not going to be able to. They don't have access to that much Bitcoin, especially after the next halving. The supply is going to be cut in half. The new supply every day that's sold on the market to pay for electricity, for staff, it's going to be cut in half. So you have exponential demand, you have decreasing supply. This really is the chance for a super cycle like we've never seen before. I know people are talking about it last cycle, but we didn't have the setup, right? We had some companies buying. I think that's where the most part people were getting that super cycle theory from. So we had some companies buying, but the accounting rules weren't perfect. We didn't have people with a really long time horizon that are locked into retirement accounts. We didn't have pensions. We didn't have ETFs. We didn't have large companies pushing it with financial advisors. I had someone recently reach out saying that they are a financial advisor at a firm and only two, two of the hundred 
financial advisors there actually talk about crypto. The rest don't want anything to do with it. So when I think when people see the dollar signs, they will try to get people to buy it. And it's the best performing asset in the last 15 years. That doesn't that doesn't hurt either. And that was when the supply came up. So I think we may never see prices this low again. I think it's very possible. I mean, even when you think about like the last bull market, we barely broke the highs from the bull market before. Like the 2017 bull market went up to 19. This last bear market, we went up to, or went down to about 16. So, I mean, we only fell about 15% below the previous market's high. So think about that. This next bear market, if we get a bear market, 15% lower than this last bull market. I know I'm, I'm saying a lot of words that might not make sense. If we just go off that though, we could be seeing like a $55,000, $60,000 Bitcoin in the bear market, the very bottom of the bear market, just based on what happened this last bear market. And that's not accounting for all these companies, all these financial institutions, ret retirees, pensions, holding long-term. That's just like if we had the exact same thing happen, we could see $55,000 Bitcoin, which is still much higher than we're at today. That's a bearish scenario, I think. Now, of course, do your own due diligence. I will say too, today, I closed out a long on Margex, and I was even like just a little bit cautious on it. I sold and I made a 24% a gain in about 12 hours. The day before that, even when the market was falling, I just timed a bottom that was nice. Like we had hit several times at one specific point, timed it, got another 24% gain. Right now, I have more gains than that on some of my positions. Now, if you want to trade on leverage, you can check out the link down below to Marjax. If you want to follow along to see when I'm buying and selling, like we've done extremely well like almost scary. Well, even when the markets dipped a little bit, we just had positions that we kept open and then opened new ones and took profit on them. It's done extremely well. If you want to know when I make those trades, there's a link to the Patreon underneath the video. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts on the super cycle theory and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.